Freddie Mercury was a British singer, songwriter and record producer, best known as the lead vocalist of the rock band Queen. He was known for his flamboyant stage persona and four-octave vocal range. Mercury wrote numerous hits for Queen, including Bohemian Rhapsody, Killer Queen, Somebody to Love, Don't Stop Me Now, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, and We Are the Champions. He led a solo career while performing with Queen, and occasionally served as a producer and guest musician for other artists. Mercury was born of Parsi descent in the Sultanate of Zanzibar, and grew up there and in India before moving with his family to Middlesex, England, in his teens. He formed Queen in 1970 with guitarist Brian May and drummer Roger Taylor. Mercury died in 1991 at age 45 due to complications from AIDS, having confirmed the day before his death that he had contracted the disease. In 1992, Mercury was posthumously awarded the Brit Award for Outstanding Contribution to British Music, and a tribute concert was held at Wembley Stadium, London. As a member of Queen, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2001 the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2003, and the UK Music Hall of Fame in 2004. In 2002, he was placed number 58 in the BBC's 2002 poll of the 100 Greatest Britons. He is consistently voted one of the greatest singers in the history of popular music. Early Life Mercury was born Farouk Bulsara in Stone Town and the British Protectorate of the Sultanate of Zanzibar, East Africa on September 5, 1946. His parents, Bomi and Jebel Sara, were Parsis from the Gujarat region of the then province of Bombay Presidency in British India. As Parsis, Mercury and his family practiced the Zoroastrian religion. The Bulsara family had moved to Zanzibar so that his father could continue his job as a cashier at the British colonial office. He had a younger sister, Kashmira. Mercury spent most of his childhood in India and began taking piano lessons at the age of seven. In 1954, at the age of eight, Mercury was sent to study at St. Peter's School, a British-style boarding school for boys, in Panchgani near Bombay. At the age of 12, he formed a school band, The Hectics, and covered rock and roll artists such as Cliff Richard and Little Richard. It has been said that one of his formative musical influences at the time was Bollywood singer Lata Mangeshkar, but one of Mercury's former bandmates from The Hectics has said that that is a lot of rubbish. The only music he listened to, and played, was Western pop music. A friend from the time recalls that he had an uncanny ability to listen to the radio and replay what he heard on piano. It was also at St. Peter's where he began to call himself Freddie, and in February 1963 he moved back to Zanzibar where he joined his parents at their flat. At the age of 17, Mercury and his family fled from Zanzibar for safety reasons due to the 1964 Zanzibar Revolution, in which thousands of Arabs and Indians were killed. The family moved into a small house at 22 Gladstone Avenue, Feltham, Middlesex, England. Mercury enrolled at Isleworth Polytechnic in West London where he studied art. He ultimately earned a diploma in art and graphic design at Ealing Art College, later using these skills to design the Queen Heraldic Arms. A British citizen at birth, Mercury remained so for the rest of his life. Following graduation, Mercury joined a series of bands and sold second-hand clothes in Kensington Market in London with girlfriend Mary Austin. He also held a job at Heathrow Airport. Friends from the time remember him as a quiet and shy young man who showed a great deal of interest in music. In 1969 he joined the Liverpool-based band Ibex, later renamed Wreckage. He lived briefly in a flat above the Liverpool pub, the Dovedale Towers. When this band failed to take off, he joined a second band called Sour Milk Sea. However, by early 1970 this group had broken up as well. In April 1970 Mercury joined guitarist Brian May and drummer Roger Taylor who had previously been in a band called Smile. In 1971 they were joined by bassist John Deacon. Despite reservations of the other members and Trident Studios, the band's initial management, Mercury chose the name Queen for the new band. He later said, It's very regal obviously, and it sounds splendid. It's a strong name very universal and immediate. I was certainly aware of the gay connotations, but that was just one facet of it. At about the same time, he changed his surname, Balsara, to Mercury. Mercury designed Queen's logo, called the Queen Crest, shortly before the release of the band's first album. The logo combines the zodiac signs of all four members, two lions for Leo, a crab for Cancer, and two fairies for Virgo. The lions embrace a stylized letter Q 
the crab rests atop the letter with flames rising directly above it, and the fairies are each sheltering below a lion. There is also a crown inside the queue and the whole logo is overshadowed by an enormous phoenix. The whole symbol bears a passing resemblance to the royal coat of arms of the United Kingdom, particularly with the lion supporters. Career, Singer Although Mercury's speaking voice naturally fell in the baritone range, he delivered most songs in the tenor range. His known vocal range extended from bass low F to soprano high F. He could belt up to tenor high F. Biographer David Brett described his voice as escalating within a few bars from a deep, throaty rock growl to tender, vibrant tenor, then onto a high-pitched, perfect coloratura, pure and crystalline in the upper reaches. Spanish soprano Montserrat Caballé with whom Mercury recorded an album, expressed her opinion that the difference between Freddie and almost all the other rock stars was that he was selling the voice. She adds, The Who lead singer Roger Daltrey called Mercury the best virtuoso rock and roll singer of all time. He could sing anything in any style. He could change his style from line to line and, God, that's an art. And he was brilliant at it. A research team undertook a study in 2016 to understand the appeal behind Mercury's voice. Led by Professor Christian Herbst, the team identified his notably faster vibrato and use of subharmonics as unique characteristics of Mercury's voice, particularly in comparison to opera singers, and confirmed a vocal range from F No. 2 to G5 but were unable to confirm claims of a four-octave range. The research team studied vocal samples from 23 commercially available Queen recordings, his solo work, and a series of interviews of the late artist. They also used an endoscopic video camera to study a rock singer brought in to imitate Mercury's singing voice. Career, Songwriter Mercury wrote 10 of the 17 songs on Queen's greatest hits album, Bohemian Rhapsody, Seven Seas of Rye, Killer Queen, Somebody to Love, Good Old Fashioned Lover Boy, We Are the Champions, Bicycle Race, Don't Stop Me Now, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, and Play the Game. In 2003 Mercury was posthumously inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and in 2005 he was posthumously awarded an Ivor Novello Award for Outstanding Song Collection from the British Academy of Songwriters, Composers, and Authors. The most notable aspect of his songwriting involved the wide range of genres that he used, which included, among other styles, rockabilly, progressive rock, heavy metal, gospel, and disco. As he explained in a 1986 interview, I hate doing the same thing again and again and again. I like to see what's happening now in music, film and theater and incorporate all of those things. Compared to many popular songwriters, Mercury also tended to write musically complex material. For example, Bohemian Rhapsody is acyclic in structure and comprises dozens of chords. He also wrote six songs from Queen 2 which deal with multiple key changes and complex material. Crazy Little Thing Called Love, on the other hand, contains only a few chords. Despite the fact that Mercury often wrote very intricate harmonies, he also claimed that he could barely read music. He wrote most of his songs on the piano and used a wide variety of different key signatures. Career, Live Performer Mercury was noted for his live performances, which were often delivered to stadium audiences around the world. He displayed a highly theatrical style that often evoked a great deal of participation from the crowd. A writer for The Spectator described him as a performer out to tease, shock and ultimately charm his audience with various extravagant versions of himself. David Bowie, who performed at the Freddie Mercury tribute concert and recorded the song Under Pressure with Queen, praised Mercury's performance style, saying, Of all the more theatrical rock performers, Freddie took it further than the rest. He took it over the edge. And of course, I always admired a man who wears tights. I only saw him in concert once and as they say, he was definitely a man who could hold an audience in the palm of his hand. Queen guitarist Brian May wrote that Mercury could make the last person at the back of the furthest stand in a stadium feel that he was connected. Mercury's main prop on stage was a broken microphone stand, which after accidentally snapping off the heavy bass during an early performance, he realized could be used in endless ways. One of Mercury's most notable performances with Queen took place at Live Aid in 1985. Queen's performance at the event has since been voted by a group of music executives as the greatest live performance in the history of rock music. The results were aired on a television program called The World's Greatest Gigs. Mercury's powerful, sustained note during the a cappella section came to be known as the note heard round the world. In reviewing Live Aid in 2005, one critic wrote, 
those who compile lists of great rock frontmen and award the top spots to Mick Jagger, Robert Plant, etc. all are guilty of a terrible oversight. Freddie, as evidenced by his Dionysian Live Aid performance, was easily the most godlike of them all. Over the course of his career, Mercury performed an estimated 700 concerts in countries around the world with Queen. A notable aspect of Queen concerts was the large scale involved. He once explained, we're the Cecil B. DeMille of rock and roll, always wanting to do things bigger and better. The band was the first ever to play in South American stadiums, breaking worldwide records for concert attendance in the Morumbi Stadium in Sao Paulo in 1981. In 1986, Queen also played behind the Iron Curtain when they performed to a crowd of 80,000 in Budapest, in what was one of the biggest rock concerts ever held in Eastern Europe. Mercury's final live performance with Queen took place on August 9, 1986 at Nebrath Park in England and drew an attendance estimated as high as 160,000. With the British national anthem God Save the Queen playing at the end of the concert, Mercury's final act on stage saw him draped in a robe, holding a golden crown aloft, bidding farewell to the crowd. Career, Instrumentalist As a young boy in India, Mercury received formal piano training up to the age of nine. Later on, while living in London, he learned guitar. Much of the music he liked was guitar-oriented. His favorite artists at the time were The Who, The Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, David Bowie, and Led Zeppelin. He was often self-deprecating about his skills on both instruments and from the early 1980s began extensively using guest keyboardists. Most notably, he enlisted Fred Mandel for his first solo project. From 1982 Mercury collaborated with Morgan Fisher and from 1985 onward Mercury collaborated with Mike Moran and Spike Edney. Mercury played the piano in many of Queen's most popular songs, including Killer Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody, Good Old Fashioned Lover Boy, We Are the Champions, Somebody to Love, and Don't Stop Me Now. He used concert grand pianos and, occasionally, other keyboard instruments such as the harpsichord. From 1980 onward, he also made frequent use of synthesizers in the studio. Queen guitarist Brian May claims that Mercury was unimpressed with his own abilities at the piano and used the instrument less over time because he wanted to walk around on stage and entertain the audience. Although he wrote many lines for the guitar, Mercury possessed only rudimentary skills on the instrument. Songs like Ogre Battle and Crazy Little Thing Called Love were composed on the guitar, the latter featured Mercury playing rhythm guitar on stage and in the studio. Career, Solo Career In addition to his work with Queen, Mercury put out two solo albums and several singles. Although his solo work was not as commercially successful as most Queen albums, the two off-Queen albums and several of the singles debuted in the top ten of the UK music charts. His first solo effort goes back to 1972 under the pseudonym Larry Lurex, when Trident Studios house engineer Robin Jeffrey Cable was working in a musical project, at the time when Queen were recording their debut album. Cable enlisted Mercury to perform lead vocals on the songs I Can Hear Music and Going Back. Both were released together as a single in 1973. Eleven years later, Mercury made a contribution to the Richard Wolfe Wolf mix of Love Kills on the 1984 album and new soundtrack to the 1927 Fritz Lang film Metropolis. The song, written by Giorgio Moroder in collaboration with Mercury, debuted at the number 10 position in the UK charts. It was produced by Moroder and Mac. Mac also produced the 1987 single Hold On which Mercury recorded with actress Jo Dare for a German action drama Zabu. Mercury's two full albums outside the band were Mr. Bad Guy and Barcelona. Mr. Bad Guy debuted in the top 10 of the UK album charts. In 1993, a remix of Living On My Own, a single from the album, posthumously reached number one on the UK singles charts. The song also garnered Mercury a posthumous Ivor Novello Award from the British Academy of Songwriters, Composers, and Authors. El music critic Eduardo Rivadavia describes Mr. Bad Guy as outstanding from start to finish and expressed his view that Mercury did a commendable job of stretching into uncharted territory. In particular, the album is heavily synthesizer-driven in a way that is not characteristic of previous Queen albums.